So now we have a probability and statistics question and we're looking at, at a standard deck of 52 cards. So these types of questions are very common on tests and standardized tests and that's why we're going to practice too. And most importantly we're going to use the law of addition for total probability and we will focus on mutually exclusive events and non-mutually exclusive events which we will define as we solve these examples. And before we jump into the questions, again, we're dealing with cards, 52 standard deck. We know that the sample space is something we can define for a set of 52 cards. So for one example of a sample space is if we pick a card or a note based on the suit. So we, we know we can have a club, spade, heart, or diamond. So here's a standard deck, right? We know we have 52 cards, we have four suits, right? The suits are what? We have the club, I'll call this the club. We have the spade, we have the heart, and we have the diamond, right? And we know for each category based on suit, there's 13 cards, 13 each, right? So that's what we mean there for one sample space, just based on the suit. Then we can have a card and pick a card based on color. That's the sample space. It can be red or black. So we can have the red colors or the bottom ones, the hearts and diamonds, which are going to be black. That's another sample space. Another one, maybe we can pick it based on an ace. So we can either draw an ace or not draw an ace. So let's say we have a deck of 13 cards. We can either draw an ace or not draw an ace. And that's going to be another sample space. So that's what we mean by sample space, right? And again, we have 52 cards, 4 suits, 13 cards per suit, right? 13 per suit. We have an ace 10. We have a jack, queen, king. And these are going to be our face cards. So we have jack, queen, king and those are going to be the face cards. So now let's dive into the questions and start with the first one. We're told we have a card is randomly selected from a standard deck of 52 cards. The probability that it is a tin or face card is most nearly what? So th the probability that it's a tin or face card is what? So the first thing I want to stress is asking this very important question. Is this going to be a mutually ex exclusive event or is it a non-mutually exclusive event? So mutually exclusive event is going to be two separate events. And we know these events cannot occur simultaneously. So they do not depend on each other, right? They cannot occur simultaneously. And we separate these in their own bubbles. So I'm going to call something as event A here. I'll just draw a circle. This is A, and this is going to be event B. And these, notice, do not touch, right? They do not touch. So for event A, I'm going to say it's the probability of drawing a 10. And for B, I'm going to say it's the probability of getting a face card. Face card. And why I drew two different bubbles? Because it is indeed a mutually exclusive event where they do not simultaneously occur at the same time. So if that's the case, we just add the sum of their separate probabilities for A and B, specifically for getting a 10 and a face card. And it is a mutually exclusive event. So in this particular case, let's prove that it is indeed a mutually exclusive event. So for a 10, all we do is go down here to our standard deck of card. We know we have a 10 here 10 10 10 so we have four tens and out of the standard deck of 52 we have one two three four so the probability it would make sense to be four out of 52 for getting a 10 right and we know when we draw that 10 does not really depend on the face cards right the 10 is essentially in its own sample space so that 10 does not depend on what happens to the face cards. So the probability of getting a 10 is going to be just 4 out of 52. So we just write here for this. Or I can even draw a picture for us 
you just draw 10 of the tents. So we can draw a 10 for the ace. So the way you draw that is going to be like this. So we have an ace. We have a 10 for the heart. We have a 10 for the club. And we have a 10 for the diamond. So we have four of these. So for the face, we just do the 12 out of 52. So I won't draw these because I have to draw 12 different symbols and so on. So to save time, you just write 12 out of 52. Again, you just take all the face cards, which are how many? It's going to be these, right? It's going to be these, which are 12. The tens is going to be a different, it's disjoint from the other. So it's going to be 4 out of 52. Let's just write that. So this is 4 out of 52. So the total probability, so the probability of getting either a 10 or a face card or a face is going to equal to the 4 out of 52, the probability of this occurring for the 10s, 4 out of 52, plus the probability of getting a face, which is 12 out of 52, and you just do the addition there and we get 4 out of 13. So that should be the answer for the C. So for this bottom one, we know a card is randomly selected from a standard deck of 52 cards. The probability that it's a face card or a spade is most nearly what? So once again, we're going to say this is a non-mutually exclusive event. And we know we're going to take the probability of the face, add it to the probability of getting a spade, then add it to the minus, sorry, minus the probability of getting a face or a spade. That's why it's non-mutually exclusive. So the, what we will do is simply draw two circles and they will cross each other. So they're not disjoint anymore. It's non-mutually exclusive. And let's say this is A, event A, this is event B. And we're going to take event A to be the face, the face card. And we're going to say event B is getting a spade, right? So to get a face card, what's the probability? Again, we're just fo focusing on the probability of getting a face card. Do not combine the two. Focus on the face cards. How many face cards do we have from a 52? It's just this, right? We already found that. It's going to be simply the 12 out of 52, right? We have 12 face cards out of 52. So let's write that here. There's 12 out of 52 for the face cards. For the spade, let's focus on that. Let's focus on that probability. For the spade, this is the spade row. So how many do we have? We have 13 cards, right? 13 cards in this row. So it's just 13 out of 52 for the spade, right? 13 out of 52. Now the last question is like, we have a face and a spade. We know both of these can occur simultaneously, right? Both of these can occur simultaneously and they occur at what probability? If you look at this, we know it's a face and a spade, right? Spade and it has to be a face. So if I circle that, it would be just these, right? These are the faces that occur in the spade category. So it's simply going to be just 3. It's 3 out of 52. So for this, it's going to be 3 out of 52. So that's the probability of both of them occurring at the same time, simultaneously. Or you can do a quick shortcut. is just simply multiply this by this. You should get 3 out of 52 to find the probability of both of them occurring. So let's use that final equation. So we will use that, the probability of A plus B. And we take that equation. So all we do is simply take the 12 out of 52. So the probability in this case of getting a face or a spade is going to equal to 12 out of 52. And that's going to be for the face. And we take the separate probability for the spade, which is 13 out of 52. Then we, again, at the end, you have to subtract the probability of both of them occurring at the same time. 
which is going to be which one? 3 out of 52. And again, to get this, you can simply take this times this. It's individual, prob independent probabilities. So you would do that, and we get 3 out of 52. And if you finally reduce this, you get 11 out of 26. And I think that's it. I hope that wasn't confusing. And in this case, it should be B. And that's all for this. Thank you.